Hi everybody, welcome to Mini Monet's Art for the Young. My name is Emily and today we are going to be creating an Air Force canvas piece. So this piece right here is going to be created on an artist's canvas and I will show you the supplies that we are using today. So this is the first supply and this is an artist's canvas. It's wrapped around a wood frame. You do not have to use a canvas. So for instance, if you wanted to use a piece of wood or if you wanted to use a piece of watercolor paper or just a regular piece of paper, this is square. It's a 12 by 12 canvas. I also have a couple of nice sharp pencils with some erasers. I have a variety of paint brushes and sizes to pull from. I have a ruler and I also have some paint in the colors of white, blue, and red. And these are acrylic paints. So I'm going to zoom in so you guys can really see how I create the piece from a better angle. So I'm just gonna lower you down and we're just going to have you right above me on a nice bird's eye view. All right, so we're gonna tighten you up here so you got a good angle. You can see all my pencil lines. So here's my canvas, we're just going to set it down Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do with this canvas, it's sometimes a little bit easier than using on the easel for um, the drawing portion of it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and we are just going to do a nice diagonal line going from corner to corner. So I will take my pencil and just try to get that line right in half. You're gonna drag it all the way across to the corner with your pencil. Now, you may not be able to see that super dark, but you will, will be able to see it with your own canvas. You can always go over a little bit darker, but you guys can see that we've got a nice line going all the way across. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to create is we are going to make another line going all the way down. And this time, this line is going to be going from this corner all the way down the middle. Okay, now I'm just going in the one triangle. I am not going all the way to the other end. Now, of course, this is your piece, so if you have a different vision in mind that you would like to do, you can do that. So now you can see I have my line going from the corner to my line here. Okay, this area right in here will be the star part of the flag, and this will be the stripes, and this area will be the actual Air Force emblem. So we are going to go ahead and create our stripes on one side. So what I like to do is I just do about a ruler size stripe and I start at the bottom line right here just so that I have a nice area to go and I just bring it all the way up. Just continue to go across. Now you are welcome to change the size and the width of your stripes if you would like to have it um, a little bit wider or smaller or if you would like to do something even different like maybe you want to do a tie-dye pattern or maybe you want to do more of a speckled splash or something unique, feel free to do that. This is kind of the whole fun part of creating your own painting. Okay, so now you can see we have our stripes on one side and we will have the star area over here and this is going to be our emblem. So now I can turn this so that we really are, I'm gonna lower you just one more notch, I think, just to make sure that you can really see what we're doing. Okay, perfect. So now we are going to create the emblem right in here. So remember, you can create this smaller, you can create it larger if you prefer. So what I like to do is I'm going to, and I'm gonna pull this over just so you guys can see this one more time. So we are going to create the lines in here first. So again, if you want the smaller, larger, you can go ahead and do that. All right, so we will start with creating, and I, I created about a four inch line. You do not have to do that exact size by any means. It's just sort of what I did. I made sure I left enough room up top here for all of the little details on here. So we'll just say, I'm just gonna create about a four inch line. I tried to keep it somewhat carefully in the middle here, just a little bit. And we will do the same on this side. I did not measure this, so it was a perfect exact spot, but. There we go, we've got two of those lines there. And then the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to create another, a parallel line. So we'll create another line going this way, but we're going to stop short of that four inches if you are doing the four inches. Again, you don't have to do that. So maybe I'll stop at about three and a half 
and I'm just gonna go, 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 and I'm going to stop. So you guys can see, it's just a smidge shorter on the other side. Okay, same thing over here. Parallel lines, bringing this up to about three and a half inches. All right, so from here, close off your ends, one and two. And now I'm going to create the second line, which is right here. So we're gonna create this one right below it. Give it a little bit of space underneath. Okay, so we are gonna to go to this side over here. And this one, I want you guys to bring it all the way up to the same area as here. So we're gonna take this ruler. Again, you really don't have to use a ruler. It's just kind of what I did. So again, I'm gonna just go ahead and bring it up that three inch, three and a half inches. Okay, from here, got a line. Same thing over here. So now you've got basically three parallel lines. Same thing right here, three and a half. Okay, so you guys can see, I'm just gonna bring it in. All right, now we'll connect the underside part. This one I want you guys to um, remember, it's going to be shorter right in the middle. So you, got to, you have to come up just a smidge. So let's say we do about three inches. Okay, we're gonna do this one as a three inch mark. One, two, three. Same thing on this side, just keep it in the middle so you have some room to create those diagonals here in a moment. One, two, three. Okay, now, this time when you close it, these will be in a little bit of a diagonal. Notice I'm not even worrying about having to use a ruler for the diagonal part, I'm just leaving it as so. Okay, so now when you get to the, the end parts over here, and I'm just going to hold this up a little bit closer so you guys can see where we're at at this point. We need to close off these ends right here, but they do need to be in a diagonal. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna zoom you in just a little bit so you can really see. And what I like to do is I like to just kind of pretend like they're all sort of connected. So I just jump, there we go. Same thing on this side. We're just gonna pretend like they're all sort of lined up. We're gonna jump just a little bit. All right, that looks nice. Close any little loose ends that didn't get closed up. Okay, looks really good so far. Now, before we continue to go down, let's get up here so we do not forget this one and this one. All right, so these are quite a bit shorter. So let's just say, since I did mine at about four inches, I'm going to create this guy. We're gonna say about, um, let's do an inch. Okay, so we're gonna do an inch on this side and I'm just going to give it again a little bit of room underneath here and we're just gonna go about an inch on either side. Okay, so an inch, same thing over here. Leave a little bit of room, but not too, too much. An inch, okay. Now I want you guys to go ahead and create a triangular shape. And you can use your ruler or you can freehand it. It's sort of up to you. Some people really, really love having a ruler and other people you know, or just could, could go without. And I'm, I could go either way. I'm fine either way. All right, so now we've got really our main three connectors here. And now we wanna go ahead and create the center because essentially this is going to look like the star in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a circle. You wanna, you, you may trace something if you prefer. Um, I typically just will end up freehanding it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create my circle down here. All right, so I typically just kind of go around into a circle until I get the shape that I like for my circle. That looks pretty good. Create a nice little circle. And then you want to create, we're going to go right below, right in the center, and we're going to create a nice wide V shape, okay? And go into what feels like a diamond shape here, kind of boxy. All right, we've got this guy. Now we need to go over here. So basically I want you to envision a star's legs. Okay, so now we need to come up here to create the inside of the legs right in here. So this needs to be one leg. It's not connected, but keep that feeling that it, that it would be. Okay, and then we're going to create what would feel one of the other legs of your star. Okay, so now we need to bring this out and close it off. Same thing over here. You're going to, it's going to feel like a 
leg right in here, but they are not connected right there. Okay, another one over here. And you are going to connect this one as well. Okay, so now you have the basics here. You want to go ahead and create your US Air Force, if that's what you would prefer to write. You may write something else if you would like. So what I like to do with my words is if I have three words, I start with the middle word right in right in, as the center first. So I'm going to do air. Okay, you may do this smaller, you may do this, you know, in a nice uh, font if you prefer. Some people are really into lettering, that type of thing, or if you want to get some stencils or just freehand it, or maybe you want to do it in cursive. It's sort of your choice. So you've got air, and then you're going to have US on one side and force on the other side. And of course, you can always make this uh, smaller, or you can have it more curved. It's up to you. This is your piece. Okay. Force, and over here, we're going to do US. All right. Now, the next thing you really want to do is you want to kind of go over your penciling that you did. You want to make sure that these are nice and dark, that you can really see what you just created in pencil. So once you feel confident and you say, all right, I'm ready, I, I like what we have here, I don't need to make any more adjustments, just sort of go back in and make sure everything is nice and dark. The reason that we're doing that is because we really want to cover this in white paint so that we don't have to go around every little nook and cranny with our white paint. We might as well just, you know, paint over it. Makes it easier. So again, you may freehand it, or if you feel like, man, I gosh, I just, I think I need to use that ruler, use the ruler. So I'm just gonna go over and make sure everything is nice and dark. And I can really see everything. So that when I take my white paint over it, I know what I'm doing. I can see it right through the white paint when we paint over. Okay, this guy over here, just really making sure that I don't paint over and go, I cannot see anything. All right, okay. And if you need to make, you know, some changes or if you need to erase, that's the beauty about Canvas is that you can actually do that. I don't worry so much about um, the US Air Force part because I feel like I can just sort of freehand that. Okay, so now that we have everything sketched in, zoom out a little bit, we are going to go ahead and start with our white paint. So you are going to literally take your white paint and a large brush and you are going to dip into the white paint, no water needed, and you are going to cover your entire lower half, okay? So this entire area, go right over your pencil, and then I want you to skip the first stripe, okay? So skip the first one, and you're going to go right into the second one and just do it white. Skip the next, go right into the white. Skip the red, go right into the white, okay? That way, we have a nice base for the white. It doesn't just look like it's sitting on canvas because you guys are probably like, well, we have a white canvas or a white piece of paper. Why do we need to paint this white? It just looks very uniform. You can see the difference. There's a huge difference when you paint something white and not. Okay, so really just get that paint all the way across. I really make sure to keep this nice and thin. That is key. If you do it thick and gloppy, it's just number one, it won't dry. So your colors will all get mixed and you know, your red will become pink, of course. And it just, you know, it just doesn't dry as nicely. Okay, so get the whole thing covered in white on the lower half. Then you may turn your canvas if you prefer. And if you need to switch out your brush, switch out your brush, but don't forget, this is going to be red. Okay, so your next one is going to be white. And if you're feeling a little nervous about using a larger brush on these stripes, switch out your brush to a different size, okay? So get that first one. Again, you guys can see I'm doing it nice and thin. Okay, skip your stripe. Pop into the next stripe. Almost done. Skip a stripe. Really pay attention because this white blends in. And you're going to go right into the next one and then the last little one in the corner. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see. All right, the last little one in the corner. 
Now, you'll notice mine is very thin, so we can have it dry. Now, while this is drying, I like to go into the blue, okay? So I'm gonna take my brush that has white paint on it and I'm going to just set it down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go right into that navy blue. Now, um, some people really prefer a different shade of blue, so if you have a different shade, um, use it, or if you prefer to have it a really deep, deep navy, you know, maybe do two coats, see what, what works for you. So. Again, I use a nice large brush because we have this nice space right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill mine in. And I try my best to keep my strokes going in the same direction, okay? So meaning I don't swirl it around or zigzag it, you know, but who's to say my way is the right way? You do what works best for you or what feels good to you. Maybe you want more texture in your paint, then you can swirl it around, <laughs> whatever you want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go slow. And you notice that when I'm using my brush, I'm keeping it flat, okay? So I keep it nice and flat, just so that I can go really close next to those little edges, okay? Really flat, I go nice and slow next to the edges. Also, keep a little wet paper towel or a baby wipe next to you because there's gonna be times that you're gonna go slip over or you're gonna go, oh no, my blue, right? White, right into my white or I need to fix this and it will just literally wipe right off. Okay, so you can see I'm trying to keep the lines going in the same direction. You have the option to paint the sides of your canvas if you want. It's totally up to you. So you can paint the sides if you like. I'm gonna let you guys decide that. Dip into a little bit more paint. Again, I'm really using a thin amount of paint. If you are wanting a deeper, darker navy, all you have to do is let this first coat dry and add a second coat to it. Okay, so I'm gonna go real careful up to my next line. If you have a brush that's got some loose bristles, you can turn, turn the brush for this part right here just so that you can really get a nice line up here. I have a couple of loose little bristles on my brush, so I'm gonna be careful that it doesn't go into the white. Okay, so I've got this one. I'm gonna go back in, make sure that the brushes, the brush strokes are going in the correct direction so it looks nice and uniform. Okay, I'm not bumping the camera too much for you guys. All right, almost done with the blue. Um, another key part of making sure that this blue is really thin is that we need it to dry. So we really need this blue to dry in time so that when we put our white stars on here, we're not dealing with white stars on wet paint. It's just not fun. So you can see what this would look like if I did not have the sides painted. So let's just paint them because we're here, we might as well do it. So I'm just gonna paint the sides, it's kind of fun. Most adults really like to have the sides painted so that when they hang on a wall and you see it, it's just, it's all covered all, all the way around the wrapped canvas. But a lot of the kids that I teach typically just kind of leave it, which is fine. Okay, taking my brush and I'm going to set it aside. So right now we're just going to recap. We can see, we'll zoom back out. We can see that we have the white paint all the way around, the white stripes. We have some space, you can see it right here for the red, and we're going to let our blue dry. All right, so from here, I'm going to just carefully turn this, and we are now going to go into our red stripes because that's going to give, it's going to allow this space still a little bit more dry time. Okay, so we're going to grab another brush and we are going to pop into the red stripes. All right, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see. Okay, going in with the red, and the funny thing is there's actually several colors of red, if you can believe it, but there are so many shades of red when you go pick out your paints. There's, I mean, there's some that are more blue, some that are deeper, some that are, you know, more orangey, but um, this is a pretty true, like, fire engine red, in my opinion. Okay, so again, I'm flattening my brush. You guys can see I'm really barely dipping in, into any extra paint. So I'm flattening my brush, just going right up to that line. Turn your canvas if you need to. I, I turn it all the time, even if it's on an easel. So if you guys are doing this on an easel, 
you know, great, but you don't have to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure this is nice and thin. So important to make sure it's thin and not sloppy looking. Okay, so when you get up to these little edges right here, be careful your white paint might still be a little wet. So just be careful with your fingers that you're not putting it into the white and then to on your hand and then moving it across to the canvas. Okay, so I'm just gonna carefully go in here. Again, you know, now that we're getting up to these lines, you have to be a little bit more careful and, and go a little slower because it's, uh, you already have your white in there. So you wanna make sure this is kind of your final section for your stripes. Okay, so we're gonna go here, go right up to my lines. All right, this little guy right here. Okay, first stripe. Jump over, you're going to go to your next stripe and you're going to continue on. And again, this is honestly, it's allowing you time for your blue to dry and for your white to dry. So you can probably guess that after we get our red stripes in, we are going to head over to the white area to fill in the blue Air Force symbol. So we are going to still keep that blue area drying because I can see it from here, it's still very wet. Now you can notice that sometimes my stripes get a little wonky or they're not perfect, don't stress about that. You can always clean it up with um, a wipe if you really want or you can just go back in and be flexible with it and know that painting is not perfect. Okay, I'm gonna turn my brush, go to this side, go nice and slow. Um, American flags always seem very straightforward, but they actually, because there's so many lines in here, if you and, and the contrast of the colors, you do have to go slow, and you, it does take definitely some time and some effort and patience. So hopefully you're not struggling on this part. All right, so. We're getting closer to the end. I flatten that brush nice and flat. You know, some people like to add another shade to their stripes. So for instance, like you could always add a little bit of white um, or even black to kind of distress it, make it look a little bit, you know, worn. You could do anything you want. So you could always add just a little bit of white paint or black paint to it afterwards just a few little soft strokes if you wanted it to look more distressed rather than a perfect uniform all right last one last red stripe again move that canvas switch it around to where you are feeling the most comfortable okay almost done there's a little smidge of white showing on mine right here Drop it down. Okay, the red is done. Woo. Awesome. So we're gonna kind of go back in for a minute so you guys can remember what we're looking at here. So we've got the stripes. We've got this flag area over here is drying, right? So right now this area should be pretty dry. As long as you did it nice and thin, it should be dry. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and zoom back in so that we can go into our details of our symbol here. So remember when you're painting, you always want to make sure you are painting from the top down, okay? So if you start at the bottom, you're going to end up rubbing your hand into it, okay? Now make sure you don't have anything on your, your hand on this side because you might have a little red, so just make sure you don't have anything on there. You're gonna pop into the top part, okay? And you're gonna go slow because remember you have these lines. So you're just gonna go nice and slow. This one, you definitely wanna make sure you are using a small brush. So often, you know, I will use a small brush for one area, a medium brush for another, and I just kind of flip flop back and forth in between. So I'm gonna go over here now, get this little guy done. I like to do my, uh, I like to balance it as I go. So I'll do, you know, this side over here and I'll come over on this side just so that I can really kind of see where I'm going so I don't work on one side first and then feel like, oh, it looks really different than the other side. Okay, so now we're gonna go into this one. You guys should be able to see your pencil lines. 
So I can definitely see my pencil lines, uh, but I'm glad that I went over them a second time with my pencil, like I showed you to do. Um, sometimes people like to Sharpie their pieces first, which is also an option. Um, I didn't really think it was necessary for this one though. All right, so you do have to be careful of those lines. Um, I will say that one of the things that I like when I'm painting is that I don't mind my paint to go out of the lines a little bit. Um, I, I don't mind that sort of soft, fuzzy focus, that sort of um, rustic feel. I don't mind that at all, so it just sort of depends on your personality. If you want it to be very perfect and strategic, then you might want to go a little bit slower than I am. Okay, so I've got one. I'm going to pop over to this side. Sort of outline it first. Okay, make sure you guys can still see. You can still see what we're doing so far. Okay, I flatten my brush to get down here. I could probably use a little bit larger brush. Just don't wanna go over. So here's a little bit larger brush I am gonna use just to make it go a little bit faster. Okay, dragging, dragging. Same thing over here, dragging this. Okay, as I get close to those corners, I definitely use the small ones. Use the small brush. Okay, now we're gonna go down, we're getting closer. And then I'm gonna teach you guys how to do stars in just a bit. All right, tar blue, the bigger brush. Closer, switch, because we've got our angles, we gotta use a small one over here. Okay, that looks nice. Those are lined up pretty good. You can see there's a little bit of some movement right here. I am just not really that worried about it. I feel like, you know, nobody's really gonna walk up to my piece and use a ruler on the line, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, we'll go to the next side. Again, remember, you can turn your piece if you need to. Okay, so we're gonna go in here. It's these little details that really count with taking that patience and that effort. You'll wanna make sure you have decent lighting when you're doing this so you can see. And this may be a two-day project or a a two-part project depending on how much time you have. Pop this one over here. Okay, done and done. Now we're going to go into the center part for the circle. Again, depending on the size of your circle will depend on the size of your brush. So if you've got a pretty tiny circle, make sure you choose your brush wisely. It's better to start with a small than a large one. All right, so now we're gonna go into the details of this guy right here. I did a little too much paint on my brush, but we'll manage. Okay, so we've got this guy. We're gonna get this one, make sure it's nice and centered. And again, you guys can see, I'm actually sort of going over some of my pencil lines a little bit because I really feel like, you know, the pencil is a great guide, but the paintbrush is really what does the work for you, okay? So don't worry if things change or you need to get flexible or improvise a little bit on things when something doesn't work out, you know, it might just be meant to be. All right, so we've got that going, sorry, that took a while. We're gonna go ahead and set this larger brush down. Again, it depends on the size font that you want, but I am going to start by putting my wording on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go nice and slow with my letters. You can turn your brush carefully. You can make them how you want. You can have them stenciled on if you prefer, um, or you don't even have to have words on there. Okay, so we've got the first one. I often will find that I end up meeting 
the letters in the middle. So I'll start like on one end and then I'll go to the other. Okay. You can make it, you know, a more fancy font or curvature, or you can make it more lined and printed. Okay. But you can see how adding that first word in there in the middle, it centers it. So I put air in there first and that centered it versus trying to figure out where to place everything. So centering the middle word first is important. Okay. And you may find that your words or your letters end up being a lot larger than what you had done in your pencil and that's okay. Okay. Get our R in there. And then we're gonna <clears throat> go ahead and go into the stars. So if you need to, if you've been using a brush and it's the only brush that you have that is tiny, then you need to go and wash your brush that is really small and wash it really, really well because you're going to be using it for the stars. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull you out so you guys can see here. This is where we're at. It looks really good so far. We've got our sample piece here. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and we're going to go into the stars. Now here, I want you guys to not worry or stress about the exact amount or size of your stars. So you may want to have a set amount of stars, but you will not be able to have all of the stars on there because it's a portion of the flag and it's, it's in an angle anyway. Okay, so when you start, my suggestion is for you to start on the bottom row and to start working your way up. So if you want larger stars, you're going to need to make them, you know, according, just, to, you know, sort of be flexible with how you set them up. But the first thing that I like to do for my stars is I, this is how I do my stars when I'm painting. I go across a line. Okay, so this is just a little line first, all right? And then I'm going to go into an X. Okay, so now we're going to, and I'll do this a few times. We're going to do an X, okay? So I know this seems bizarre, but we've got our X. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can really see. All right, so you can see, of course it looks like a four from your angle. Okay, so you can see that I started with my line at the top and I did an X next. I'm filling this in, okay? Filling that in. And now I'm going to fill in the bottom part of the star legs. I kind of think of my stars as as little uh, like a head and arms and legs. So now you can see I was able to add the point to the top. Okay, so we're gonna do it again. Leave some space, make sure you leave the space. That's really important. So we're gonna go ahead and go across, try to keep it in the same lineup, across, and then we're going to go in an X. Okay, fill this in. And once you get the hang of this, you guys will be able to do these super fast and you'll be like, I know how to draw stars from now on. Okay. Now, if you feel like, oh gosh, my, you know, my stars are a little um, see-through, just wait till they dry and add another one. So now we'll do another star. Again, I'm trying to leave the same similar space, a line across, an X. Okay. Fill in those legs add the head part of the star. Okay, another one, go across your X, fill this in, do the legs, and the head part. Okay, we're gonna do another one. Now some of your stars will be sort of going off of the page a little bit, and that's okay because that makes it look a little bit more natural rather than it's all lined up perfectly, okay? So you've got that and I want you guys to just continue to go up your rows of stars if you want to go keep them nice and close, if you want to spread them out, if you want them larger or smaller, you do that. See what works best for you. This is the sample piece, the final piece that we had created. So you guys can absolutely screenshot this if you would like. Um, but remember, start at the bottom for your stars. You can see on my sample piece, I did not. And I really just felt like, gosh, I didn't have enough room to do stars down here. It was either too small of a space or my stars were too large. So my suggestion is and tip is for you guys to start on this first lower area where that stripe is and then work your way up rather than starting at the top. Okay, so bottom go all the way up and continue. And I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and finish that up. Here's the rest of your piece. It was such a pleasure being able to do a piece like this with you guys. 
Um, thank you so much for your service and thank you for your time and have a wonderful time painting your piece. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.